Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle star, how I wonder where you are. When you look up at the night sky, have you ever wondered what's out there? As we occupy this tiny rock at a far corner of this vast universe, we know too little to even guess what is out there. However, we have less doubt about our sun, the source of light, the center of our solar system. It has been there since the beginning of time and will stay with us till the end, right? What will you say if I tell you that our sun may not be the center of our solar system? What if our solar system is not a solar system, but rather a solar systems with two stars? Nemesis is a hypothetical dwarf star about 1.5 light years away. This is a theory that first came to life in 1984. It attracted a lot of attention because finally, we found a possible cause for the Earth's seemingly periodic mass extinctions every 26 million years. It is an interesting but scary theory. However, since we can't see what is beyond the Oort cloud, it is still hidden in a cloud of doubt. Whether Nemesis is a red or brown dwarf, it is for sure a cool star. So instead of calling it Nemesis, which is the name of a spirit of divine retribution, I will call it Twin Cool Star. Agree? That Twin Cool Star is also thought to be the home of the 10th planet, Nibiru, which according to Zechariah Sitchin, is home to an extreme advanced extraterrestrial civilization called Anunnaki. Nibiru is on a supposed 3600 year orbit around the sun. And guess what? It is almost time for Nibiru's next scheduled visit. In 2008, Japanese researchers announced that an undiscovered planet, 100 astronomical units away and two thirds the size of Earth, could be the planet X according to their calculations. However, mainstream laughed at every Planet X theory and every scientist that dared to bring that up. However, new technology and new telescopes have taken us past the previous unknowns. We have found dwarf planets that sounded more like from science fiction movies than from our solar systems. In 1992, we discovered the first Kuiper Belt object beyond Pluto. But now we have found more than 100,000 dwarf planet-like objects with diameters over 100 kilometers. Do you know how big the Kuiper Belt is? It is from the orbit of Neptune, which is at 30 AU, to about 50 AU from the Sun. Then we found the Oort Cloud. Technically, we did not find it with a telescope. We found it in theory. So scientists call it theorized Oort cloud. It is a thousand times more distant than the Kuiper belt. Objects from the Kuiper belt and Oort cloud are collectively called trans-Neptunian objects, TNOs. These findings push poor Pluto out of our planet lineup. According to Wikipedia, it is now called a dwarf planet, together with the other 200 we've found. Finding 10,000 dwarf planets does not mean one of them is Nibiru. But even Wikipedia admitted the chance of finding a big trans-Neptunian object is all but certain. But we have to face the fact that we still have not found it. If you search under trans-Neptunian objects in Wikipedia, you will find, quote, the existence of trans-Neptunian rock ice bodies of planetary size, ranging from less than an Earth mass, up to a brown dwarf has been often postulated. What does postulated mean? Suggest or assume the existence, fact, or truth of something as a basis for reasoning, discussion, or belief. In plain words, we know there is a big planet in our solar system on a elliptical thousand years orbit, but we don't know where it is. But Scientists had to admit they were wrong when we found Sedona's 11,000-year orbit. Then in 2014, 
2014 FE72 appeared on your radar with a 90,000 year orbit. This time, scientists were no longer laughing. Then in August 2016, Nikko was found by Lulin Observatory Telescope in Taiwan with a diameter of only 124 kilometers. It is 160,000 times fainter than Neptune. What raised everyone's eyebrows was its orbit. Nikko's orbit has a 110 degree tilt in relation to the orbit of the Earth. And listen to this. It is orbiting the opposite direction against all other known orbits. So what does that tell us? Nothing much, just that we don't really know much about our own solar system. Now we have a problem. We just proved our scientists are not very good in their fields of expertise. So who should we believe now? Actually, I'm not suggesting you fire mainstream scientists. I just suggest you not believe them, at least not to believe them 100%. Listen with open ears, but judge with open minds and a question mark. ScienceAlert.com released an article today called Our Son Could Have Been Born With an Evil Twin Called Nemesis. A catchy title and interesting material with references of recent findings by two UC Berkeley researchers. Based on a series of statistical models they ran on the relative populations of young single stars and binaries in the Perseus molecular cloud, they concluded that all stars form initially as wide binaries. With my limited space knowledge, I would not dare to doubt theories presented by the famed UC Berkeley astronomer Steve Stoller. The theory stated almost all stars could be born as multiples that often spin away on their own. As part of the VLA Nascent Disk and Multiplicity Survey, Vandom for short, researchers called stars younger than half a million years old Class O stars, mere babies in star terms, and stars a little older between 500,000 years and a million years, Class I stars. Our sun is a Class I star. The distance between the two binary class O stars is usually around 500 AU, while distances between two class one stars is more likely around 200 AU. 500 AU is about 0.008 light years. Imagine Voyager 1, launched in 1977, is still only 170 AU away. 200 AU is really, really far. However, since the finding of the first brown dwarf in 1995, we've identified 2,800 brown dwarfs in 2015, and we lost count after that. How come we still have not found our twin cool star Nemesis? Nemesis believers believe it is because Nemesis is on the side of the sun, so it could be outside our door, but we still can't see it. Sounds logical, but Earth circles the sun, so Nemesis can't hide behind the sun forever, right? All these totally logical theories make no sense when they are put together. Theoretically, our sun should have a twin star 200 AU away. But how I wonder where it is. Is it up above the world so high? Like a diamond in the sky? Could it be that the Anuki are so advanced they found ways to make Nemesis invisible? I mean, it is possible that they want to keep all the light and energy to themselves. Since the brown dwarf is already so dark, maybe they can make many black holes. Or it is just too dark for our telescopes to see. Maybe it is really a cold star? It is not only possible. We've already found one. WISE J08551.83-0715 and it is only 7.5 light years away 
and it is as cold as is our North Pole. Remember, that is only what we've found so far. Can you imagine what we will find? If our twin cool star is really small like Earth and cold like ice, it may be harder to find than a diamond in the rough, right? So, is it possible that our sun has an evil twin behaving like an unwanted in-law? Planning on a surprise visit with the intention to turn it into a disastrous stay? Hopefully not. Let Nibiru and Nemesis stay a myth for a while so you and I can stay in this little paradise called Earth. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.